Good evening, folks, and welcome to the horror. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Ursha, and this week we are taking part in Franchise Frenzy. Uh, and this was created by the Horror Man and Horrific Nightmares JM. Uh, this is the Part 3s. Yes, getting into a little bit of muddy waters here. <laughs> uh, so in at number 25 is Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. Uh, definitely one of my least favorite of the franchise. Uh, I wanted a sequel to Part 2, so this isn't it, you know. <laughs> they kind of went off in their own direction. You had a new family. Um, and you did get a little cameo from uh, Stretch as a news reporter. Um, but it wasn't enough for me. I wanted more. And uh, I didn't care for the new family. I didn't really care for the portrayal of Leatherface in the film. Uh, I did like Ken Forey, however. In at number 24 is Jaws 3. <laughs> uh, now, I did see this one in theaters, and even back then I thought it was cheesy and campy with the hokey 3D effects, you know. Um, definitely a big drop from the quality of the first two films. Uh, and you got Dennis Quaid in this one, uh, taking over for Chief Brody. Um, yeah. Don't care for this one too much. Uh, definitely one of the worst in the franchise. Next up, one of my least favorite in the Scream franchise, Scream 3. I feel like in this film they went too far in the comedy direction and not enough horror. Um, yeah, that's why I don't like it as much as the first two. Um, I did like the reveal of the killer at the end, too. That was one of the better ones. Um, I didn't care for Jenny McCarthy in there. And, of course, you had Courtney Cox's bangs hairdo that everyone seems to hate. <laughs> Next up, we have Alien 3. Um, which is not one of my favorite in the franchise. I do appreciate that they tried to bring a darker tone uh, to match that of the original film from 1979, bringing back that sci-fi horror element, uh, where in this one you just have the one alien stalking Ripley, and uh, Ripley actually dies in this one. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird one, uh... I didn't like the fact that they killed off a couple of the characters from Aliens, and a lot of people don't like that. There seemed to be a lot of studio interference in this one. Next up we have Puppet Master 3, Talon's Revenge, uh, which has the debut of Six Shooter, one of the coolest puppets. Uh, yeah, that wild, wild west gunslinger with the six arms, really cool. A lot of fun. Next up, we have Resident Evil Extinction, uh, which, yeah, I really enjoy this one. Uh, some of the best zombie action uh, takes place in the desert, uh, and we get to see uh, Claire Redfield in the series, finally, so uh, um, making it more connected to the games. Although we do get a little of the dreaded clone saga there with Alice. <laughs> Next up we have Friday 13th Part 3 in 3D. <laughs> um, never really cared too much for this one. It's one of my least favorite in the series. Although, you know, we do finally get Jason's iconic hockey mask. Um, outside of that, there are some memorable kills, but... I feel like it's a big drop in quality from the first two films. Uh, I feel it's a lot more campy and, uh, yeah, where the first two films were more serious horror. And it, the opening theme song, even though I do enjoy it, it kind of sets that tone, telling you that this isn't as serious as the other ones, you know. <laughs> Next up, we have Child's Play 3, which... 
This one seems to get uh, kind of lost in the shuffle. I do enjoy this one, though. I do like the military school setting. Um, and yeah, you see an older Andy, and Chucky has some of his best lines. So yeah, not quite sure why people don't like this one as much, you know, but I enjoy it. Next up we have Saw 3. Uh, I can't seem to find my physical release of it, sorry. Uh, but, yeah, it's definitely a solid entry in the franchise, but I feel like this is where some of the problems start, because this is where Jigsaw dies, you know. So he dies early on in the franchise, so I do enjoy Tobin Bell's performance, though. But, yeah, the series kind of becomes kind of convoluted after this, I feel, because it's, like, all about what Jigsaw set up before he died, you know. <laughs> Next up, we have The Evil of Frankenstein, uh, which I have part of this, uh, the Hammer Horror Series edition here. I don't have the single release, unfortunately. I do plan to get that, though. Uh, but not one of my favorite in the series. Uh, I feel like this one, uh, they were working with Universal Pictures, uh, so I feel like it, it's too much like a Universal Pictures movie instead of being a Hammer Horror film, you know? Uh, and it almost doesn't have an identity of its own. And uh, that's what separates the Hammer horror films from the Universal. They always had their own thing going. But this one feels like kind of a a knockoff of the Universal Frankenstein movies, unfortunately. Next up, we have The Conjuring 3. The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh, people seem to hate this movie. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I actually enjoy it. Um, yeah, because it's based on a true story of a murder trial where demonic possession was part of the defense, you know, which was interesting. Um, yeah, so in the film, this boy is possessed and, you know, the, the Warrens come out to try and help and, um, the possession is passed on through the family, basically, uh, and there's like a curse going on from this witch totem that affects the family, and it's pretty interesting. I enjoy it, actually. Next up is The Ghost Galleon, which is the third film in the Blind Dead series. Um, don't care for this one as much as the first two, but I still enjoy it, for sure. I love everything with the Templar Knights, um, but outside of that, I don't really care for the characters too much and the story. Uh, there's like these models that go out to uh, the ghost ship, this ghost pirate ship as part of like almost like a reality TV series before reality TV. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I love the idea of the Templar Knights being on this ghost pirate ship. And uh, every time you see the Knights, it's really cool. You got that classic gothic atmosphere and tone. Um, but yeah, outside of the knights, I feel like it's very slow-paced, and uh, it's not enough action with the knights, you know. Next up, we have Leprechaun 3. I bet you didn't think it would be this high, huh? This is actually one of my favorite in the franchise. I think it's probably the most fun entry in the Leprechaun series. Uh, just seeing the Leprechaun in that Las Vegas setting is just so much fun. Uh, there's so many great kills, so many great one-liners from Leprechaun. And I like some of the side characters, like the uh, magician and his assistant. And uh, you got Caroline Williams in there from Texas Chainsaw 2. Uh, yeah, really fun entry. Next up, we have Omen 3, The Final Conflict. Really enjoy this one. Uh, I think Sam Neill does a great job as a grown-up uh, Damien Thorne. Uh, trying to prevent the second coming of Christ <laughs> um, by butchering uh, every baby that was born the same day as the Christ child. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, actually. And at the same time, he is the ambassador to Great Britain. So, uh, yeah, it's his chance to bring evil to a whole new level. Next up, we have Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Uh, 
is a film that initially I didn't care for when I first saw it, but uh, over the years I've uh, I've come to appreciate it. Uh, I don't hold it in as high regard as some people, but I think it's a fun entry. A little bit campy, but I, I like the Halloween setting. Uh, it represents the season of Halloween very well. I love the score from John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. And, you know, it's it's a nice kind of one-shot story within the Halloween franchise, you know. Uh, yeah, it doesn't include Michael Myers, of course. Everybody knows that, but I think it's fun in its own merit. Next up we have The Son of Dracula, which I have as part of this Dracula Legacy collection. Uh, yeah, this is one you don't really hear too much about. Uh, it has Lon Chaney Jr. starring as Count Alucard, uh, which obviously is Dracula spelled backwards. And, and the funny thing, he's not really the son of Dracula. He's actually supposed to be Dracula himself, you know. But uh, we see Dracula get married in this one. So, yeah, I really enjoy this one. I think it's a lot of fun. It's got that classic universal gothic tone. Uh, yeah, really cool one. Next up, we have Army of Darkness, which is Evil Dead Part 3. Um... Yeah, I feel like this one almost goes a little bit too far in the comedy direction, but it is a lot of fun, and uh, Bruce Campbell is just a blast in the role of Ash. Um, but I feel like this one was less horror. It was almost almost more like a, a fantasy epic. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I still think it's a lot of fun. Next up, we have... Dracula, Prince of Darkness, which is the third film in the Hammer Dracula franchise, which sees the return of Christopher Lee as Count Dracula. What a very welcome return. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, the thing that bothers me about this one is Dracula doesn't have any dialogue in this film. Uh, so you just kind of have to rely on Christopher Lee's presence, which is fantastic, of course. But uh, And I love Barbara Shelley in the film because she starts out as kind of the damsel in distress uh, in the Castle of Dracula. Um, but once she becomes a victim to Count Dracula and becomes a vampire, she's very sexy, very charismatic. And uh, she almost steals the film from uh, Dracula. Uh, one of my least favorite deaths of Dracula, I didn't like how he, you know, just a crack in the ice and he falls under the water, you know, and he's killed by clear running water, which I always thought was kind of silly. Um, but yeah, definitely a solid one at, at any rate, definitely a well-made film. Next up we have Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, which is probably the most fun entry in the Hellraiser series. Uh, I feel like this one, Pinhead is actually at the forefront, and that's really the only time he has been. Uh, I feel like they were trying to make Pinhead like a real horror icon like Freddy, and he has a lot of one-liners here. <laughs> um, get to see Pinhead in a church, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I do enjoy some of the Cenobites, too. Like, there's one guy that shoots compact discs out of his arm. <laughs> Very much of its time. <laughs> uh, I don't feel it's as good as the first two by any stretch, but uh, it's definitely fun. Next up, we have Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. I feel like this one is definitely underrated. It's really fun. Uh, you get to see Reggie Bannister with a couple sidekicks, you know. Uh, you got this little kid helping him, and you got this girl, Rocky, who's really cool. She's like a karate expert, kicking ass with nunchucks, you know. Uh, I see a lot more with the spheres in this too, a lot more kind of CGI effects, um, but it's very well done. Uh, we also see the return of A. Michael Baldwin to the series where they recast him in part two, so it's nice to see him back. Uh, he does get captured by the tall man this time, so it's up to Reggie and his crew to help out. We also see the return of Jody, who's kind of stuck inside one of the spheres. Yeah, I really like this one. 
Next up, we have Psycho 3, which was actually directed by Anthony Perkins. This one is just a straight-up slasher movie. It's kind of the only one that's like that, really. It's got some nasty kills, and it's got some sleaze in there. A lot of nudity. <laughs> um, but still a great performance by Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. And uh, Anthony Perkins does a great job directing, too. Uh, this one is a lot of fun. Don't feel it's as good as the first two, but uh, definitely a solid entry in the series. Next up, you're probably gonna, you're not gonna believe how high I have this one up. It's Sleepaway Camp Three: Teenage Wasteland. I absolutely love this one, <laughs> and it kind of gets lost. It's kind of the forgotten entry in the Sleepaway Camp series, but I love the return of. Pamela Springsteen in the role of Angela. I think she's an absolute blast in this film. Now, where in Sleepaway Camp 3, she was just killing off all the people that she considered bad campers, doing bad things, doing drugs, being promiscuous. In this one, it's just basically anyone that ticks her off is doomed to die, you know? <laughs> But there's some awesome kills, like at one point she runs over a lady <laughs> with a lawnmower. Uh, she raises up this girl on the flagpole and drops her on her head. <laughs> she lights off of fireworks in the guy's face. Um, yeah, this movie is so much fun. It's an absolute blast, and I love it. Next up, we have Son of Frankenstein. Really well-made film in the Universal Frankenstein series, and this is the last film to feature Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster. On a stars Basil Rathbone as the son of Frankenstein, uh, and he does a great job. But to me, the real star of this film is actually Bela Lugosi as Igor. I mean, he just chews the scenery. I think it's one of his best roles. <laughs> Next up, we have The Amazing Day of the Dead, uh, which I feel is just criminally underrated. Amazing gore effects from the master Tom Savini. I think it's probably his best work. Um, yeah, awesome zombie effects and uh, zombie carnage. Uh, I love the setting in the underground military bunker. Uh, gives you a real claustrophobic feeling. Amazing direction from George Romero. Uh, it's definitely a very grim film with a much more serious tone, I think, than the last couple. Um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic movie. I know originally it was supposed to be a much bigger film with a bigger budget, but I just love what they did with it. And in that number one is A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Now, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Dream Warriors. Everybody seems to love this, and everybody puts it so high on their list when it comes to ranking the Elm Street series, and uh, rightfully so. It's a fantastic sequel. Uh, Robert Englund is amazing as Freddy once again. Although he does get into a little bit more of a comic territory, but still, he's still scary enough before they go over the top with it. Uh, and he has some of his absolute best one-liners, some great kills, some great dream sequences. You know, you get the return of Nancy Thompson, played by Heather Langkamp, John Saxon as well. Uh, amazing special effects. Uh, super, super fun, and I, I just love the idea of these uh, patients at the sanitarium that kind of form a group together, and they meet each other in their dreams, and they take on Freddy together, and they each have their own special powers in their dreams, and I just think it's so good. It's awesome. All right, guys, that's it for Franchise Frenzy, the part threes, which was created by the Horror Man and Horrific Nightmares JM. Thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan, in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared. <laughs>
www.theharakona.com and uh, we also got this beautiful new mug look at that very very cool thought that came out really nice so grab your merchandise today over at www.theharakona.com